I quite like these work lights, but uh, they are slightly disappointing in the sense that when you open them up, there's only two uh, 18650 cells inside, especially when it's got so much space. So I was thinking just how much could I fit in. So I went online, I went to eBay, and I bought this battery pack. And this is actually for things like headlamps or bikes and things like that. So it's a, a modular system that it's got the connector in it. And I thought that's quite useful because maybe I can actually just patch this in there and leave this connector on it, although it's got quite a long lead. And the idea is you could just, um, you know, you could, uh, in the case of the actual application, you can use it to power your bike light or your headlight. So it came with a few accessories. It came with this little pouch. It also came with uh, just random things that didn't mention the listing. One was a head strap, which is clearly designed to take a bike light and convert it into a, a headlamp. And it also came with this little flashing tail light, which is uh, it's nice that they threw in these extras, it's appreciated. Um, it's nice when the sellers do that. But anyway, what really matters is the cells. Now, this was listed as an 8,800 mAh pack. And if you consider that these cells, it says on this, are 1,600 mAh, which is a bit of a shame because it would have been nice if they'd been 2.4 ampere. But either way... If you add up, because there's three cells in parallel and uh, two stacks of those in series to give you the 8.4 volts, and milliamp hour rating actually relates to, um, it relates to the amount of current you'd get over time. And the only way you're going to achieve that is if you actually discharge these cells individually. Uh, by connecting them in series, you're actually it's going to be about half the the value they rate here because it's the it's the milliamp hour at 8.4 volts, but uh, I'll get that out of the way. So what I'm actually going to get here is 3 times 1,600 milliamp hour, if they're that. So I'm going to get about 4.8 amp hour, which is the equivalent of a 4-pack of the 2.4 amp hour ones at 8.4 8 volts. So let's open the light and see, uh, you know, let, let's for a start, let's get rid of the base here because it's quite bulky. And since it's the start of the weekend, I'm going to have a little tipple. In this case, the tipple is going to be a mixture of whiskey and sugar syrup to make a nice whiskey liqueur, which is very nice, actually. Mm. Generic supermarket whiskey mixed at a ratio of about 80% whiskey. Well, that's a long screw. To 20% um, sugar syrup. You can find the recipe for that if you do. Just search the word liqueurs on my channel and you'll find it. So here's the light. Uh, let's open it up and uh, see how much space there is inside. One screw. I'm pretty sure I should be able to fit the full six cells inside because it looks as though it's kind of designed for that almost. But I have to keep in mind that the switches and the connector are also sticking in. So I'm not 100% sure if they're going to fit past that. And the last screw. So what have we got? Now this light, uh, unlike the, one of the others, does not have that... Um, not a lot of room here. Uh, it doesn't have that module sticking up, which is good. It's got the resistor built inside. So this is where I'm going to be trying to stick the battery pack. And I'm going to have to bend these terminals back. I don't think there's going to be enough room in this for this with all this, the cable. I think I'm going to actually have to cut this lead, which is a bit awkward because uh, it's powered up. I don't want to short this out in case the pack goes nuclear. I'm going to have to carefully strip this to actually get it in here. I'm also going to have to remove this battery pack out the back, which uh, the last one was siliconed in tightly. And so is this one. So I may have to pause while I do that because that would be quite annoying. So that's going to take a wee while. So, based on that, I reckon I should be able to fit it in if I cut it round about here, but of course, as I say, I can't just chop it, to, uh, otherwise it'll short out, so I'm going to have to strategically nibble it. This is where it could all go horribly wrong. So I'm just going to nibble around there and try and part the insulation, the outer insulation. Now 
getting ready, uh, if it does short out, to just chop this. But I don't want to do that. Theoretically, the little circuit board in here has protection against uh, over a short circuit, but I get the feeling that it puts the uh, little MOSFETs that do the switching of the charging and the discharge control, um, I get the feeling it puts them at, uh, under a lot of stress, and I don't want them to go short circuit, because then that would remove the charging protection. I wonder if that has ever happened. So I'm just nibbling my way through here, gingerly. Uh, this is not easy because it's quite a tough, chewy exterior cable. Sorry if this looks like watching paint dry. Oh God, that is so, you know what? I might just pause while I'm doing this because this is just a... Uh, I'm going gingerly just to avoid shorting this out. But, uh, oh, I'm, I'm through to one of the cores. All right, okay, here we go. So I'm going to cut one of them now. I'm going to deliberately cut one of them just a bit longer than the other so that they can't short together. So I'm just going to uh, spread them with a screwdriver. Spread the cores. I'm going to cut the red one, I'm not going to say positive because it might not be positive. And then the white one a little bit shorter. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, do the same, I'm going to strip a section and then peel this off. Check the polarity and you know what, I I'm going to pause briefly because this battery pack will probably be a nightmare to get out, so I'll be back shortly. Okay, things worthy of note. The glue they used to stick that in the back is just absolutely dreadful. Just. I had to take the sleeving off this battery to get get it out. I had to just slit it open and take the battery out because I cannot even get that that you know cut now uh, plastic out. It is glued solid onto that white silicony stuff in the back. Uh, I've popped this switch out. Uh, just to, I'll click it back in now. In fact, just to make it easier to access. Another thing that's worth of note is this two cell pack, the little uh, protection circuit board in here. They've actually spot welded the, the metal contacts directly onto the copper pads, which uh, is quite odd. Uh, never. Have I seen that before? Done like that before? I'm not 100% sure. It's usually soldered on, but it, it seems quite odd they've done that. So here's the pack. Uh, you know what, before I even attempt to solder this in, uh, I'm going to check polarity of this to make sure that the polarity is correct. Because, as we know, stuff from China is not always, uh, it, you know, red is not always positive, so I'm just going to... Red is positive. That's nice. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I, I'm going to bend these back because there's no way I can get the battery down here without bending those things out of the way. I'm also going to have to bend this lead back, so I'm going to have to take the connections off and squish things a bit. And by squish, I mean that in the highly technical sense. Yeah, I'm going to have to take all the connections off here. I'm to, to actually, I'm going to have to desolder these completely, just to make as much space as possible, and fold these back as close to the switch as possible to actually allow for the cell to go in the pack. And I also might add a wee bit of extra insulation. Right, you solder iron. Uh, remove that connection completely. And I'm just going to mop the solder off that with some desoldering wick which I have just misplaced. Here we go. I'm going to mop the solder off this back of this connection just so I can fold it back as far as possible. Should do it. And that's going to be negative. This one's going to be positive, but again, they've soldered it on the wrong side for my requirements at this point in time, so I'm going to take that off. That one does look how I've taken a wee bit of solder off that. I 
and I'll fold that one back. If I just snap that, no, it was actually the solder was uh, formed a joint down there, and it's kind of it was the solder that was snapping. That's a bit of a relief. Rightio. So um, if I flow that now, it's just going to puddle out nicely. That's fine. So now I want to get the connections from the other battery pack, which are hopefully not shorted together. I think I'll restrip this because it's a bit messy at the end. In fact, this is a good chance just to twist this on with um, the positive from here. So I'll strip this a wee bit more. With these uh, Unior strippers, in case people ask. So I'm going to twist these wires together. Solder them. Crop them down. For a wee spot more fresh solder, lead based solder, because the other stuff may be lead free and that's just never, never good. There we go. And now I should be able to put my lead in like this. Now I have to get the two negatives, so I'm going to have to. Is this good? Now I'm going to strip that as well. It's soft, silicony cable. And I'll join that onto the white, which is the, the negative from here. And then put them onto the charging jack. The charging jack, uh, as mentioned in other videos, just goes straight out to the charger. Technically speaking, you could power other stuff from that. So if you had an 8.4 volt load, you could just plug it into the charging jack because it is effectively in parallel with the cell and the cell still has a protection um, so that you can over discharge it. Oh, when I'm here, I'll just put a touch of solder on the back of this one as well. And then I'll just tack this on here. I'll crop the end off to make it neat. And at this point in time, the light should now work if I turn the switch on, which it does. Good. Now I just have to work out how to get this in here. So put it down that way. It's a fairly, it's not too bad. Uh, I'm going to slip a bit of cardboard between here though, just as a extra barrier, in case the solder connections, uh, I don't want them to punch through the, the uh, battery pack insulation. So uh, I'm gonna tuck that down there. Get a bit of cardboard which says, making things is part of being human, be a smart human. Well, I have to agree with that. It is strange how many humans just actually can't help themselves but build stuff and they're like natural born engineers. I've got a theory about that, that you know, in the same way you get the different types of bees in a hive, you get different types of human as well. That are, some are actually, some of us are actually just designed to be engineers from scratch, you know, we can't avoid it, you know, it's built into our, our DNA, if you will. So uh, let's uh, crop that off. Press that down. The cardboard will also help it combust and burst into flames later on if it malfunctions. Excellent. Fortunately, this back is made of plastic. Oh, that's not good. So I'm going to tuck that in there now. That all looks okay. That 
looks fine actually. Right, now I'm going to uh, put this seal on here. And this is where I have to try and... Yeah, that white wire just doesn't want to stay down, does it? It wants to pop up. So let's get the seal back in position. And carefully put this in so the wires go into position. Oh, it's fitting, it's all fitting in. I don't think the battery can go anywhere. Should I add a wee bit of foam just to keep the battery in place? You know what, these little metal legs and that sharp, actually you know what, that bit of sharp uh, rag is coming off because I don't want that anywhere near the, the battery. And I may actually just put a wee bit of foam on the top of that just to keep it pressed into the back. So here's a little bit of packing foam. Which I shall place on there. I think that should do it. Uh, what can I stick that? I'll get a foam pad. In a sense, the double-sided foam pads might have been enough on their own, but I'm just going to put one pad there. that on there and then just carefully pop this lid on now tucking those wires in so they go in a controlled manner I think those wires are actually going to end up going directly onto that foam but that's alright as long as it doesn't push them against anything sharp it should be fine that rubber seal is just getting a wee bit annoying So now I'm just going to squish them in. I don't want the wires to sit across in the back and get squished against each other. That wouldn't be a necessarily a good thing. So I'm just uh, repositioning them slightly. That looks pretty good. And then it's just a case of putting the screws back in. And that will prove that, yes, with a bit of effort and with safety in mind, you can fit six um, of the 18650 cells in the back of this. For those who haven't twigged it out yet, 18650 uh, actually is the size of the cell. Uh, 18 millimetres diameter by six, 65 uh, millimetres long. I don't know why uh, it's a five-digit uh, code. Maybe the... It's designed to cater for cells that do actually exceed 100 millimetres. But the 18650, the zero at the end, I suppose, like it's probably, you know, maybe it's measuring in tenths of a millimetre, but uh, that would seem a wee bit too... millimetres not a very big measurement. So... Here we get the light. Yep, looks good. Uh, is the charger going to be happy? Here's the charger. The charger, to all intents and purposes, seems happy. So, uh, yes, that's it now. Upgraded. It's going to last uh, approximately twice as long now, which is good, but uh, that uh, remains to be put to the test, so I'm, I'm going to fully charge that now and just see how long it lasts, uh, but that's going to take a whole evening or so to actually test, but yeah, good results so far I'd say. Very good result indeed. <laughs>